Hey, this is Scott with Bait to Bend. If you're not fishing, you're watching fishing. And thanks a lot for watching today. And today, it's do-it-yourself, homemade planer boards. Hey, this is Scott with Bait to Bend. Thanks a lot for watching today. Today is all about do-it-yourself, homemade planer boards. I've been fishing for catfish for about 11 months now. I've had this channel. One of the most challenging thing for me is, is that I'm on the Mississippi River just outside of St. Louis. Major current going on. Most of the time, we're looking at three to three and a half miles per hour um, with the current. My biggest challenge usually is, is keeping everything separated. Planer boards can be a little bit of expensive. I have a couple of here. Um, this one here is the Crazy Wolf. It's a smaller version. I don't know how well it's gonna do um, with the Mississippi River current, but maybe in lakes and whatnot, I will, uh, I'll test that out. Um, it is eight inches uh, long. The other one that I have is an offshore planer board. It's a little bit bigger. It also has the tail, uh, the, the tattle flag, but it is um, 10 inches. Now, last night I messed around a little bit and I made and put together my own uh, planer board. It's 12 inches long and it sits about six inches tall. I've seen it done a couple of times online and thought I'd take a crack at it myself. We're gonna go through it step by step. I've got some changes I would like to make. Styrofoam, metal, some hardware. How tough can it be, right? This one was a little bit uh, of a challenge being my first go about it. There's a couple things I would do different. So let's get started. We have got the pieces to do it. Starts out with a piece of metal. When I purchased this metal, I bought it in sheets. It's, this is 12 inches by 18 inches. And I'm cutting them in half. Therefore, I can make four out of these two sheets. I've already cut one in half. So I cut this, we've got 12 inches by the nine inches. Again, this is what I started with, 12 inches by 18. However you get your metal, doesn't matter. Just make sure you make them the dimensions you want them to be. I'm on the Mississippi River. Big current means I need a little bit bigger planer boards, I believe. And I'm gonna cut them and uh, kind of go from there. But here is what it started with. I cut my in half. We have our release clip. We have a two nuts that go with our eye bolt. We have our ring that will go in the corner. And with that ring, we will have this corkscrew swivel. Styrofoam. All of this Four dollars. This was either at Michael's or uh, Walmart. And the rest of this was at Lowe's. I also got some orange duct tape. I think you can duct tape it. I think you can um, spray paint. But the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and you'll want to uh, tape up your foam. All right, our orange is good to go. Next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and measure up where we're putting our marks. And what I've been doing is, is going ahead and, and leaving a little bit of space up top here so that we have a little bit of room at the top, but not making this too much space. I did round off when I cut it in half. And when you do this, you definitely wanna grind these down Go ahead and, and get rid of that really sharp edge because that will cut your line. So we got it, I think, close to our spot that we want it to be. Measure it up a little bit here. That's six inches. Six. Okay. Now, this is going to be a right. So the other one that I made He's on the left side of the boat. This is in the front, going that direction. 
right? Because you have the tail and the back. So on this next one, we will put the bolt up front and the tail in the back here. So since this is right at through 12 inches, we're going to do it a third of the way in, which is four inches, one, two, three, four. Right there is where we want or that hole to be cut for the bolt. And then back here, our hole for a tail. And then four inches in, I want another hole cut right here for some weight, if we need to put some weight on it. So now we have our spots to mark there. Let's go ahead and, and mark our spot on this. Make sure we're still good. So on this top one, I'm gonna do a bigger hole, the quarter inch. This is a quarter inch. My drill bit is a quarter inch. All right. We're definitely going to want to sand this down, get as much sharpness as we can off of this. And we're gonna go ahead and take this one out, grab a smaller one. Now we'll make our hole for the tail. One. And. Now be careful with those metal shavings. And we have We have our hole in the back, our weight, and we have our hole for the bolt. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna put one of these nuts on because this is going to be um, on this side. Grab another washer. This will go in here. Then on the back side, you're gonna put a washer and another nut on the back side and get it on there just enough because I'm gonna throw some of that glue, some of this Gorilla Glue on here. We have that on and I'll secure that here in a second. And then on this side also, you have your washer and your, your nut on there. So now what we'll do is we'll take our, our pliers here, I'll tighten this up. It's on there real good. Now you have your clip. Next thing we're gonna do here is take our, our ring, our corkscrew swivel, And we'll go ahead and put it on in this bottom corner. Each time you start making these also, I mean, you're just gonna get better. My first one was kind of pathetic. This hole down here is perfect. It's smaller than the other one. And then I can run my line through this. And then my other line will get clipped to this. Next thing I'm going to do is, is I will go ahead and get out my Gorilla Glue. Ooh, good catch. So I have Gorilla Glue. And I also have, which I am a big fan of, the Gorilla Glue Spray. Really good. I mean, I've had, no, I, haven't, I haven't tested this in water yet, but... It's on, it's on there. What do you think? A little time out. We have a little one that is in a Lego club every Wednesday morning at 7.30 at the elementary school. And tonight we've been working on our Legos. So these are stairs that go up and you go through this doorway and you go down these stairs. This is the flower of the last petal of the flower of the magical unicorn flower. That the unicorns, that's the only thing unicorns eat. That's the last petal of the flower that unicorns usually eat. Okay. Thank you very much for that information. 
It's very beautiful. Thank you. You have a good night. I'll be in there in a little bit. Okay. Ah. All right. All right. So that is the Gorilla Glue. Is we are going to spray Gorilla Glue spray. I'm going to move you back. Now, let's put this on here and we're going to swoosh it around a little. Now, this is our right planer board. Put some weight on it. And there you have it. All in all, these planer boards uh, are going to probably do the trick. Come springtime, right now it's in the middle of winter, we're in February, um, in St. Louis. I'm going to test these on the Mississippi River and we'll do a follow-up video. Do me a favor and comment below. Give me some ideas or something maybe that you would have done different. Uh, we're going to round this off. Uh, we're going to go ahead and throw some, uh, some more tape around the top here to give it a little a better aesthetic look. But all in all, we've got the bolt, the release clip. We've got the tail, we've got a hole for the weight just in case we want to drop it straight down. And we've got ourselves a homemade do-it-yourself. I'm a beginner and if I can do this, you can certainly do this too. If you like little projects like I like little projects, put a comment below and let me know what kind of projects you like. Check out the how-to videos also. I've got a couple other things that we've done and one of them being we made some dragon tails last year that were pretty successful. So let me know what you think. This is my version of my planer board, which took me roughly eight to 10 minutes to do and make. I will have everything in the comments below. Go ahead and uh, tell me what you think. And uh, we'll put these bad boys to the test when the springtime hits. These cost about 40, 50 bucks per pair. And I spent 50 bucks and I'm gonna be able to make six of them. This is Scott with Bait to Bend. If you're not fishing, you're watching fishing. And thanks a lot for joining me tonight in my do-it-yourself homemade planer boards. You guys have a great night. And as always, God bless you. And if you're interested in a Bait to Bend hat, just let me know. Comment below. They're 20 bucks. 100% of the profits go to the homeless shelter here in St. Louis. You guys take care. This is Scott with Bait to Bend. See you next time. I'm not going nowhere until you click one of those other videos. They're around here somewhere. <laughs>